guys a tour of my crib I'm heading to my room right now with that dude <laughs> I'm alive what yeah I'm doing YouTube video now this will be my first video to upload here God, I fucking forget my wallet in the room are you serious yeah god damn it I need to wait for them oh my god ah, thank god I don't know. Ooh, wait. You wanna come in my room? Alright. I can come over there. Let me make a video quick. It's the eye. Guys, all right. Let me talk to you guys about being another one, Bravo, and in for Lee. I mean, being another one, Bravo in for Lee is kind of. I mean, it is interesting if you actually try to be very serious and focus, uh, because in order to graduate from AIT, there are two requirements. One is passing your APFT, which is PT, and the second one is passing the school. You know, make sure you got good grades in the school. But I trust you, I promise you, in the school how uh, they're not going to let you fail. You're always going to pass. So that's not something to worry about too much. Even though some people still fail, but they always give you a second chance. So the school how will give you a chance for you to pass. But PT is on you. In order to graduate from AIT, you have to pass PT. And PT is an individual work. So if you don't pass your PTs, you're definitely not going to graduate. If you don't graduate, you're probably going to get recycled or be put on a holdovers. And holdovers are those who actually are uh, on the process of being chopped out of the army. But trust me, man, in order to get chopped out of the army, it takes forever. So the faster way out of AIT is graduation. Yeah, that's the faster way out of AIT. So if you come here, you have to be very serious and focused. You know, try to stay on top of everything so that you can graduate and get a heck out of here. But if you fall into a category of being chapter out, it takes forever, probably six more minimum. And that's crazy. So, well, some of the important things of being under one problem in AIT 
I mean, most of the instructors in the schoolhouse that actually teach you the jobs, most of them are re veterans. They retire from the army. Some of them probably served 10 years, 15 years, and some of them served the entire 20 years and retire, and now trying to share on their experience to new soldier. So you'll be able to hear a lot of cool stories from, from the instructor in the schoolhouse, and you'll also be able to to learn something from some other civilian who work in the schoolhouse. So it's very cool, and you do a lot of hands-on. So everything you do in the class, they will give you a change for you to practice then on the vehicle yourself. So that's one of the cool things about it. You also you have the chance to put hands on the home V, do stuff on the home V. Like that will, that will make you feel like a mechanic. But to be honest, when I knew they came here, I had no mechanical idea. Even though I do, I don't have much mechanical idea, but I do something on my own, and it makes me feel proud. At least I'm doing things that, even though I didn't really want to do at some point, but. Doing it, it makes me feel happy. At least I'm doing it, you know, which is cool. So you're going to have the chance to do things by yourself. And I promise you, man, when you start doing that, it'll make you feel excited by yourself because it makes you feel proud that, yes, indeed, I'm doing something. So being that one, bravo, this has some of the cool stuff about it. And some of the cool, cool stuff about it also, you also have the chance to at least see a lot of military vehicles. Not just see them, but touch them. That's cool, you know. Like, to be honest, when I was on my process, that was one of my dreams. Like, you, I want, I want to drive a Humvee. I haven't drive a Humvee yet, but the chance of me driving a Humvee is, is very high because I'm a mechanic. I face them. So when I face them, I have a test drive there. <laughs> I, know, I hope you understand where I'm coming from. So these are cool stuff about it. And some of the sucks, I'm going to give you a sucks about, about being in one Bravo, yeah, especially at AIT. Uh, the schedule. Because right now we have a lot of classes actually going to school at the same time. So in order to, to fit everybody in the schoolhouse, uh, the schedule had to change. Not, we all don't have the same schedule. So there are some companies that have a day shift. For me and my company, we have a night shift. So basically we start class by 1800. From 1800 to, to, to 02 a.m. in the morning. So when we start, when we stop by 02, and then from 0230 to 0330 is PT. So basically, if my schedule, we do most of our stuff at night. And during the day, we have to sleep. And we we'll sleep from 0400 to 1100. And then we we'll wake up at 1100 by 012. We go for char. After char, and then we come back home. No, not home, but we come back to the barracks. And all depends. If you come up from, the, if you come up from char, basically, that's the time. That's a personal time. But some jokes, some jokes I do not actually give you the personal time. They kind of try to bring in some idea like tactical tuesday or dnc where you do marching and other shit like that they just try to keep you occupied especially my drill sergeant he does that all the time but if you have a drill sergeant who actually chill they will probably give you a time after child you know for you to relax and do some other stuff on your own. if you leave post and go get drunk outside and then come back on post drunk bro don't do that don't do that don't do that i think is that ucmj Probably it is Juicy and Jay. Don't do that. You don't want to get doing that. Because as soon as you get caught doing that shit, you're going back to phase four and probably get chopped out of the army. That is UCMJ. Uniform of military called justice, something like that. I don't, I don't know the divine, but shit like that. Don't don't get caught drinking on post. It's not good. Yeah, so when you face up, man, you have a lot of shit to do. Especially, but most likely if you're not face up. Uh, some people do have family coming to them, regardless if you face four or face five. If your family, if you have family coming on post, they can come and get you off. But see, if you face four, you don't really change. You stay in your military, you stay in your OCPs, and go out with your family. But if you face five, if in your family come, you can change into civilian clothes and then hang out with your family, which is very cool. But there's a lot to enjoy in AIT, a lot. There's a lot to enjoy in AIT. We do have basketball court. We do have. We play soccer, we play, we do a lot of shit over here, fishing and other stuff like that. I mean, it all depends what you're into, we have it here, but you just have to work for it. You have to work for it. Because when you first come here, they're trying to try to treat you as if you stay in basic. But I mean, thing changes. You know, when you start adapting to the systems and then you also have everything and then understand the whole situation. And then if you have to a person who actually is serious and then you can actually put yourself into a situation where you won't be able to get caught into trouble or other shit like that. You know, like I said, man, always keep focused. If you come to AIT, stay focused. Do what is right. You know, don't never allow yourself to get caught in shit. Do what is right. Do what is do what is right. And I mean, 
hang out with cool, cool people, you know. Don't hang out with everybody, man. There are some people who are full of bad ideas. So hang out with the best people you can. And, I mean, it's just 13 weeks. Me and I one bravo, they're just 13 weeks, which is three months. If you do that, bro, you're out. Live your life the way you want to live it and do whatever you want to do. So, I think that was enough information, I guess. All right. Cool. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. It's your boy, A-L-I-D apostrophe B-E-S-D.